Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerto. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather, remembering God's love for us, we bring also the wounds that need healing, the sins that need forgiving. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin, and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now let us give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. And Moses said to jo Joshua, Choose for us men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat upon it. And Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our, Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
I lift up my eyes to the mountains, from where shall come my help? My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help oh, comes from the Lord who made, made heaven and earth. He will keep your foot from stumbling. Your God will never slumber. Nor he sleeps, nor he slumbers. Israel's God. Our help oh, comes, comes from, from the Lord who made, made heaven and earth. The Lord, your God, the Lord, your shade. At your right hand, by the day, the sun shall not smite you, nor the moon in the night. Oh, Our help comes, comes from the Lord, Lord who made, made heaven and earth. earth. The Lord will guard you from evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and coming, both now and forever. Our Lord, Lord comes from the Lord, who made, made heaven, heaven and earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to entrust you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort, be unfailing in patience and in teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and active, discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor regarded man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Vindicate me against my adversary. For a while he refused. But afterwards he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will vindicate her, or she will wear me out by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God vindicate his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will vindicate them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we need encouragement to persevere in our prayer. When we experience challenges in life, we can become convinced that God does not hear. Or if he does hear, he does not care. And that's when we need a word of encouragement, or even better, a paradigm shift. And that's what Jesus does today. He tells us a story. There is this judge, Jesus says, who has neither decency nor conscience. He's a corrupt public official 
interested only in his own advantage. And a widow appears in this courtroom. She's a poor and powerless woman, somebody not noticed by the movers and shakers in her town. She has no money to bribe this crooked judge. She cannot afford a lawyer to speak up for her. And so what does she do? She speaks up for herself. She demands again and again, loudly, justice for herself. In short, she makes quite a nuisance of herself. It's no surprise that the judge soon grows weary of this. In the original Greek of the New Testament, he compares her in his face attitude to getting a black eye. And so to spare himself further annoyance, he decided not simply to hear her case, but to give her justice. The widow with the big mouth, somebody regarded by society as just another loser, manages to get her way there in the courtroom of an unscrupulous judge. Wonders never cease. Jesus tells us this particular story to encourage us to continue in prayer and not to lose heart. What's the point? Is the unscrupulous judge who does justice to spare himself annoyance, is this really a portrait of God? I don't think that that's what Jesus has in mind. But certainly, that's how some people look at the practice of prayer. They paint a picture of God as an unscrupulous judge, or a petty bureaucrat, or an arbitrary boss, or a, an abusive parent. With such a picture before them, it's a wonder that anybody prays at all. Well, God is not like that. Instead, the Lord is the author of all justice and compassion. It may be that we are to imitate in our prayer the persistence shown by the widow. But if so, it's not because God is hard-hearted and uncaring. So let's take another look at that judge. What do we know about him? Well, we know that he's unscrupulous, without decency, no conscience. He doesn't respect people. There's no fear of God in him. He is a closed universe. This judge always has it figured out. And he leaves no room for the possibility that God may have more creative answers to the questions his life presses on him. Or do we know anybody who fits that description? Of course we do. That description fits us perfectly. Maybe some of us even make a career of doing that. There are those times all too often when each of us lives entirely for ourselves. We refuse to allow for the possibility that God might have a different solution to the problems that beset us, or that God might offer us better things that we can ask for or imagine. Our decisions about life leave no room for God, and no room for other people who have needs and wishes different from our own. The universe, as we understand it, becomes very small, and we are its sole inhabitant. So if that judge represents us, who does that loudmouth widow represent? Could it be that this poor and powerless woman who demonstrates unlimited shutzpah is there as a reminder of God? Like the widow, God is always attempting to break into our closed universe, to draw us into relationship, to make us recognize 
what our relationships with God and neighbor demand of us. God is not the unjust judge. God is the widow who wears him down. Where then is the unjust judge to be found? The unjust judge is inside each one of us. The purpose of prayer is to wear him down, to force him to do justice. Prayer is the widow's voice, strident yet sane, insisting that things can be different. Many people have trouble with prayer or even give up the practice because they think that praying is an exercise in telling God what he already knows or persuading God to do what he wouldn't do otherwise or somehow changing God in one way or the other. Prayer, any prayer worthy of the name, is quite the opposite. The primary effect of prayer is not on God, but on us. God's love is already unconditional. His justice perfect, His compassion limitless. He recognizes our needs even before we do. It's not God who needs to change. It's up to us to get in line with God's program, God's vision. And the prayer is a large part of how that comes about. When we pray, prayer is our declaration that we don't want to be a closed universe dependent only on ourselves and on our solution. Prayer is our desire to be open to God. In our prayer, the Holy Spirit speaks in the voice of the poor widow who demands justice from that unscrupulous judge. The miracle of prayer is that the judge's resistance breaks down and for once does what is right and may even do so again in the future. That loudmouth widow would not have succeeded had she not been persistent, confident, and unconcerned about others' thought of her. She had what is known in Yiddish as shutzpah. Our prayer needs to have shutzpah, not because God is deaf, but because opening our hearts to God is no easy matter. There are many things in each one of us that can keep God out. Sin is not the only obstacle. Attitudes of mind may keep the door shut and bolted. We may doubt that God hears us. We may consider ourselves unworthy. We may think that God has better things to do than to intervene in our lives. These attitudes can be driven out by our persistent prayer. The voice of the widow who refuses to take no for an answer. So my prayer is this, that each of us may long to pray and learn to pray and persist in our prayer, not so that we can change God, but so that God can change us and help us to enjoy that fullness of life that God wants for us. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our prayers, our petitions to the Lord. That missionaries in home and abroad will receive the Lord's protection as they preach the word of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of governments will imitate the Lord's love for justice in their works and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will enjoy the Lord's healing comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will welcome the Lord's saving wisdom in the scriptures that uneven our prayers and work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will rejoice in the Lord's salvation forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis for the church, ever faithful to and courageous in preaching the gospel. May she be a community of solidarity, fraternity, and welcome, always living in an atmosphere of synodality. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our strength, we turn to you. Show us your great love and answer to these prayers and hear those who call out to you day and night in every place. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Let the men give us water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and God himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we please please give me free with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices of your hands, for the grace and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by these very mysteries we serve. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the world. And you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator. And he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you. 
the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful acclamation we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, presence in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And as he once did for his disciples, so he now does for us. He opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. They may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Botitlachale our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may devote themselves constantly to the service of your Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all people, so that sharing their grief and pain their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice 
in the light of your presence, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our own earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King of the Father, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away sins of the world. Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you shed down my life, but only say, Lord, my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to Jesus God. God.